What's going on guys? guys and welcome to my video on the Phoenix 3 software. The Phoenix 3 HR that I have in front of me is part of the Phoenix 3 family and the software on these watches is some of the most advanced software you'll see on, on any multi-sport watches. It's not necessarily as pretty or as nice to use as watches like the um, Apple Watch or the newest Samsung Gear 3, but in my opinion, it can do so much more that it makes up for the sometimes um, average quality UI. It's not to say it's bad, but it's you know it can be timely to do some things. And the first video is going to be going over apps. And another word that people use to describe the apps are actually the activities. So the apps you get to when you're on the main screen, just looking at the watch display, by pressing the start stop button. Let's try and bring that up a little bit so you can see the button. There we go. That's the button. All right. So if we click it, as you can see, it brings us to all our available apps, and we can select one and begin it immediately. Now the apps you see here are the ones that you they're they're all on by default, but you can turn them off if if you'd like, either through the watch or through the Garmin Express software, or even I think the apps yeah the apps you can turn them off through your phone as well when you sync it up on Bluetooth. So we have all the apps that we have on on here and you can also download a few more and we're going to be talking about a few of the aspects of the apps today. So if you want to configure them the way you do that is by going into your settings and the way to do that is by pressing and holding the central left button which is also called the up button. I'm going to press and hold it and we're going to access our settings. Let's go ahead and press the uh, start stop to select that and then once more to go into apps. Now on here you have all the apps that are downloaded onto the watch. They're not necessarily visible when you click the uh, start stop button to start an activity, but these are all the ones that are downloaded onto the watch storage. And from here you can configure things like the names of the apps, the um, data screens available, what you want to see on the data screens, how many there are, things like that. And for those of you who don't know what data screens are, I'll go over that in really just a second. So let's go into a activity like running, because that's one that everyone can sort of relate to, and select that. And so when you enter the, um, the, the app, I like to call it the activity. I'm never really sure which one is right, but I feel like it's more of an activity. Um, either way, here you have a bunch of screens for this activity. Now one thing to note is that Garmin does add certain presets to each app. So something like auto, um, let's go find it again. As you can see, it's super complete. Auto lap, I mean that's something that you wouldn't necessarily need, I don't know, if you're doing like paddle boarding or something. So that's sort of run specific on here. But there's a variety of other um, options on here. So let's go back to the top and select data screens, the first menu option in the run application. If we go in here, as you can see, you've got the screen one, which is on by default. And then you can turn on more screens. And for those of you who don't know what those are, oops, we seem to have gone away. Um, well, it doesn't matter. I'll just show that right now, actually, the data screens. If we go and start an activity, let's start a run, for example. Here we go. I'm just going to look for the heart rate and the GPS, so that doesn't matter. It's unfortunately blocked our top field, but this is the data screen one. This is the thing you see when you're looking at your watch and you turn it on. Yeah, GPS, it won't get a signal because we're indoors. Um, and then you can scroll through data screens by pressing this up and down button. So currently we've got up here, oh, okay, I guess the GPS worked. Up here we have the... Um, I think it's total time. No, that up here is distance, which is hidden by the, the GPS searcher, and it'll go, it goes away once you start the activity. Then you got timer and the pace, and the default pace is per um, distance unit, so either mile or kilometer. And we can go to the next data screen by pressing down, and that brings us into the lap data screen. Now you can configure it however you want, but this is the one that's set by default. And you've got the lap distance, lap time, and lap pace. So the only difference between this one and the main screen is once you hit that lap button, which is down here, so if we're in an activity, let's go ahead and start it, it's going to make a little noise and vibration. There we go. And let's go back to the main data screen. As you can see, this is the total time, timer starting, and uh, there you've got that counting down. 
We've also got the pace, which is zero for the time being because we're not taking any distance. But let's say you're on a track um, and you're training, you're doing some interval training, and you want to know the time you did. Well, the best way to do it is just to hit, you know, once you hit that uh, 400 meter line that you've done one lap, you can just hit the um, lap button. And there you go, you, it knows, it memorizes that lap, and later on you can view that as, a, as its own lap. You'll view the distance and the time taken. But if you're doing interval training um, for long periods of time, having that total timer isn't necessarily that useful because as, as you can see, we don't see our lap time. So all you got to do is scroll down and now you see your lap time without seeing your total time, which is pretty nice as well. We can go ahead and hit that again and the lap time will reset. It'll reset to zero right as I click that button, but this, this display screen shows you the lap. And that's a super useful feature in my opinion, that, that display screen, because when you're running and you hit that button, you can't necessarily see that the time and distance all that well. And so it overlays it on a much cleaner screen in, in bigger font, so you can really see, okay, that's lap three. It'll give you the distance as well. Um, the pace total, uh, this is the, that was the um, lap time, and then the pace, I believe, or the total time. Anyway, let's go ahead and end that activity right now and we'll go ahead and go back oops and let's go and discard that so that's the overview really of an of what an app or an activity does see it says activity there recovery time 47 hours that's from the um i did a race yesterday and so it'll add on to it or it won't like in this case it didn't add anything but if i would have done an activity it would have added on to that recovery time and the recovery advisor is, is pretty nice let's go back into our app settings Oops, I gotta hold that down a little longer. Alrighty, settings, apps, and we're back. Let's find run, perfect. So you've got the option to turn on more data screens if you're interested in that, we can go ahead and do that right now. Turn it on, you can configure the layout. So the layout, this is, so here you've got um, a single field, which is, it'll only display one thing in front of you. The next possibility is three data screen, uh, four data screens. This is, what was that? Yeah, that was four. This is four in a different layout. This is three, that's three in a different layout. And that's two, there we go. So you got the possibility to really have as many as you want. And f what, what a field is, is a, is a one piece of data that's being shown to you. So as you can see, when you've only got one, it's your heart rate as it's being measured. When you've got um, four, you can have four different pieces of information. And three. Now, personally, I think three is sort of that sweet spot between being readable and comprehensible. I think once you have four, like you're just looking at too many numbers. Two is pretty good as well, but you know, you probably want to have more information. So I think three is pretty decent. And so we can go ahead and select start to select that layout. And as you can see, it shows us that three field layout. And then once you go down here, as you can see, you can enter something for each layout. So we'll just leave that as is. And it, it can sort of guess for some of the activities what you might want. So for running, it knows that a third data screen with heart rate data is pretty useful. So it just leaves it as that. Heart rate, heart rate zones, and average heart rate. That's pretty useful, right? So we'll just leave that there. And we could turn on as many screens as we want. And um, we'll leave that as three fields. And here we'll look, you know, you can look at all the different options available. So there's these, when you're looking for um, one of the uh, pieces of information to put in a field and you select the option, you've got these sort of main menus. So timer fields, which has all the, the different timer pieces of information available. Distance fields, again, same idea. Pace, speed, heart rate, run dynamics, cadence, temperature. And as you can see, you've got all these different fields available to you as well as others. And I, I don't know what that is. I guess that's just everything maybe. Sunset. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So while you're running, you could you could also take a quick look at the sunset. And that's, that's GPS based for those of you who might be curious. So as you can see, you've got all these fields available to you. And um, if you're interested in putting one of them within the data screens, you could do that. So run dynamics, we can put your average lap vertical oscillation. I mean, look how specific that piece of information is. It's, you know, your average vertical oscillation for the lap. Now, obviously, you do need to have a um, HRM run 
heart rate sensor connected. I don't have that near me, I don't think, no, because I used it, so it's being dried. But, you know, as you can see, that's, you know, it's a piece of information that you wouldn't see on many other fitness watches, and it's available here quickly while you're running. You can view that in real time. And yeah, that's really the main idea behind the data screens. You've also got alerts. So during the activity, you can configure some alerts to happen. And as you can see, you could add news. So you put a heart rate alert. So maybe if you're watching your heart rate and you're uh, going for a run, you want to keep it below a certain amount, you could set a heart rate. So there we go, zone one, zone two. So you can head it for zones or custom. So this watch really has, you know, it has it all. Um, and some of the app creations can take time. They are, pos they are possible to do from the Garmin Express uh, piece of software, which is available for both PC, Mac, and I think Linux as well. Um, but I've always done it on the watch just because I think it's a little better. It, it, it's done in a slightly better way. The Garmin Express is supposed to be quicker, but I don't know. I think the, the watch layout is more intuitive, even though it takes longer. It, it makes more sense the way it's done. And so that's for alerts. Um, and you've got a variety of other options that you can configure. I won't go into detail for everyone because they're pretty self-explanatory. Auto lap, you know, change the distance that you want it to um, count. And for now, it's under one kilometer. And so it'll break down your kilometers for you, which is nice. Auto pause, things like that. Climb, 3D speed, 3D distance. Again, that's useful if you're skydiving or whatever. GPS, timeout. So you got all these different available things available to you. And I think 3D, 3D distance and 3D speed are pretty incredible things. Um, as far as accuracy goes, I've tried them out and they're, they're pretty good. Um, they're not perfect, but they're pretty good. I like them. And so within each application, you have a huge amount of configuration available to you. Biking, data screens, you've know, you got all these things available. Um, but the main menus are going to be the, the same, more or less. Here we go. So I hope this video was useful um, in terms of learning the apps and activities that are available on the Phoenix 3HR. If there's something within the apps and activities that I didn't show um, that you'd like me to do, please let me know. Uh, I spent a lot of time with this watch. I spent a lot of time learning the software. And I like to think that I'm pretty good with it. Um, but obviously, it's possible I make mistakes. This video is the first of a series of videos that's going to go into depth and detail um, concerning the software on this watch. And anytime new updates come out, I'll try and address them, especially if there are major updates, not just you know firmware and, and uh, maintenance updates. But if there are updates, I'll try and keep up to date with that. Um, and yeah, so this is my the first of a long series of videos that'll help detail and explain the watch. Thanks for watching, guys. As usual, uh, like and subscribe. Uh, comments are really useful for feedback since I'm just getting started. And yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.